I started here, there was so many things that I didn't think I could do that I completely do now with ease. There's a sense of discovery and independence as well. It's also just a good feeling to know that you are your own person, that you don't always have to rely on other people for everything. I think it's important that you grow as a person and that you experience the world. My name is Liam Miller and I am a student at Temple University. Uh, I'm a junior studying computer science. I have ulric congenital muscular dystrophy. I believe it's called collagen 6 deficient related myopathies. Um, so basically my arms and legs are contracted um, and I have weak muscles. My family has been a huge help and they've always been so supportive of everything I do. Obviously they expect me to be the best that I can be, but you know they never pressured me into doing anything um, that wasn't reasonable. But I think my independence started mainly around middle school and high school just because I had to do a lot of communicating uh, with the teachers and, and the staff members and the nurses there at my schools. Uh, and I had to learn how to make it clear what I needed and be comfortable asking for things that I needed. We would encourage him to be the one to send the email, make the phone call, um, what you know, whatever the case might be. And it might be so little, you know, but each time you're building on it and becoming more comfortable with that, Leading into when Liam was 18, he, you know, we knew he had to be as independent as he could be when he got to college. And I think it's important that I started that at an early age. Maybe one of the other biggest things that kind of kicked off my independence was MDA summer camp. MDA summer camp is this uh, camp that the Muscular Dystrophy Association provides. It was just an awesome experience for me in so many ways. Uh, and that's kind of where I learned how to be away from my parents and you know, make my own decisions. Doing that for 12 years, I think, really inspired me to want to live on my own and want to do things myself. The college that I go to, they've been extremely supportive of me and, um, you know, me trying to get my degree, me trying to be successful here. Um, I've had a few, you know, bumps in the road for sure. Um, but I don't think that is unique to me in any way. Just because I have a disability, I think every student who's ever gone to college has had some bumps in the roads. He knew where he wanted to go and had applied early and, and was accepted. So while everyone else is still waiting for you know their acceptances, we were planning, the whole year we were planning, but it was going to visit the school and talking to the, they have an office of disabilities and you know, sitting down with them and I think our first conversation was an hour and a half and she went through everything that they had on campus and the accommodations and what they could provide and he had to talk to the Office of Vocational Rehab, he had to talk to uh, his health care, um, health insurance to talk to a case manager and get that straightened away so we had names and numbers and uh, his set up attendant care and nursing care so he had different companies for that and um, before we he even got to campus I think we had been there 10 times. I have 12 hours a day of attendant care and then 12 hours a night of nursing care. Uh, I make sure that he was alright, slept well with his other nurse. Uh, I make sure that he eats throughout the day, uh, make sure that he's keeping up to, uh, staying up to date on his homework, taking him grocery shopping if he ever needs to to the doctor or back up with his parents. Uh, we go to hockey games sometimes for his team, uh, so I'll be able to take lifts or Ubers down to the games and stuff like that. Aline's pretty independent. He's able to get to class by himself. He's able to cook for himself. I'm pretty much just here to spot check. And... Typically what happens is my nurse comes in at 7 a.m. Uh, she gets me up in the Hoyer lift, gets me up, puts me in a shower chair that's typically right where I'm sitting, um, that she brings in from the bathroom. Right here I have a roll-in shower, which is really nice. 
uh, it's flush with the ground so I can just get my uh, shower chair in there pretty easily. Um, so I have my own shower chair uh, that has wheels so I can roll around the room uh, whenever I need to. Um, and then also behind this curtain there's just a, a flat shower chair that's part of the room. And then over here they actually have really nice bars that go around the toilet. Um, and then probably my favorite and feature of the, of the bathroom is the size of the sink. It's perfect for me because I can get my knees right under it. Um, and I can also reach uh, the water faucet pretty easily. My first semester here um, it was very easy for the most part. Uh, a lot of stuff I already knew or you know, it was very easy material. So I had a lot of free time. Now that the classes are a lot harder and there's more of them, uh, I've definitely struggled to keep up. There are days where I absolutely have to just take a break, stop, you know, get some sleep, take a nap, something like that, because uh, I just don't have the energy. Uh, now that I'm in college, I kind of wanted to start and, you know, be as honest as I could be. Um, but I think part of the honesty now is that I have to absolutely take advantage of the accommodations when they're there for me. And for me, my health is my first priority, um, because I know as soon as that starts to go down, like, it's not going to be good. So I want to be as healthy as possible. Every other day throughout the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, I'm allowed to go over to the recreation center they have here uh, and play hockey, just practice for an hour, hour and a half. Um, outside of Temple, I play in a wheelchair hockey team in the Philadelphia area. Uh, I've been playing on that team for 10 or 11 years. But every two years, we all get together and we play in this big tournament called the Power Hockey Cup. And this past summer was our first uh, uh, our first championship in that particular tournament. Uh, and that was just easily one of the best moments in my life. Because I'm able to take the train home on weekends or into the city uh, for doctor's appointments, uh, there's typically a ramp either on the train already or one that they have to take off the platform. Uh, there's some planning that you have to do ahead of time so that you know which platforms are accessible and which ones aren't. Uh, but for the most part, most are accessible. So it's really nice to have this available because it's super convenient for me to, to get where I need to go. You shouldn't be expected to be a pioneer in this. You should really be a copycat and then kind of adapt what information you get and learn how to use it for you. Um, as I did, I talked to a lot of people already in college and figured out how it would work for me based on what they do. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and that includes people in your community, uh, but also you know, the people at you know, whatever school you're uh, looking at. Everyone has nerves about college, and there's just no way around it. So that's natural for every parent. In fact, I almost felt like I had less nerves just because we had planned and planned and planned and planned. Um, then, the, you know, by the time Christmas rolls around, they're home on break, and you're like, wow, that one went really fast. I mean, in the world of disability, there's not, we don't have the luxury of just um, being spontaneous. So it seems insurmountable at times, but you know, it's like anything, getting into routine, and just, you know, making sure you have a plan in place. I mean, obviously I think you should be nervous about going to college. And I think you should be nervous about uh, sending your kids to college. It's a very weird experience and it's something completely new to a lot, I'm sure. Um, but you should be at peace knowing that in the end, like it's the person you're sending to college will definitely transform uh, and they will grow as a person and figure out how to be independent. Um, and the good thing is there are always resources available uh, and especially in the Curacy and the community, there are always people available uh, who are willing to talk and kind of explain their story um, and maybe guide you as well. And, The person I am now versus the person I am three years ago is a completely different person in a good way. Um, and I think everybody who goes to college will experience that as well. Having gone from helping him transfer into bed to him being able to do it himself, uh, he's really grown up in front of me and that's been something that's really, really been special to watch throughout my life. So uh, after college, I'd love to live in apartments somewhere in Philadelphia. Um, and ask for a job, hopefully something with coding. I really enjoy that. I've met some great people. I've made a lot of great friends here. Um, you know, I've had a lot of good experiences. I think everybody should be independent. I don't think they should be uh, weighed down just because they have some kind of disability that prevents them from doing some things. I think 
overall you can adapt and you can work around those, those challenges and you can improve as a person and you can be your own person. I think everybody should has a right to be who they want to be and it has a right to be who they are. Um, and I think being here at college has really taught me who that is and, and how to go about doing that. Um, and I just think everybody should try this. They have a chance. It's really important.